Hi everyone, my name is Ursi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm giving you a spring TBR. So let's get started. So I'm gonna switch things up a little bit and do sort of a spring TBR, like seasonal TBRs instead of monthly TBRs. Cause I feel like with monthly TBRs, I'm kind of giving myself like homework. <laughs> And I don't want my reading to ever feel that way. The only sort of assigned reading that I'm giving myself would be those group reads, buddy reads, stuff like that, um, where we're going to have discussions on it. Um, but as far as like giving myself a list of books, I, I feel a little overwhelmed in terms of trying to get through a list. I feel bad if I don't get through a book. but. Reading is just for fun, right? It's for my enjoyment. It's for us to talk about books and having these discussions. So I'm going to switch things up to a spring seasonal TBR just to kind of have like a range of books, sort of like what I'm feeling during this time of year, sort of like a ballpark of the books that I want to get to. and. Um, I'll mention whatever group reads and stuff uh, as I get to them. So looking over my list, I do have a lot of fantasy and a lot of those have to do with group reads, buddy reads, etc. But a lot of the books outside of that um, kind of fall under various different um, genres that are very interesting to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop with the rambling and just get on to the books. That way we can have a discussion. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with my current read. Uh, as the time that I'm filming this, this discussion will be held on Saturday over on Steve Talks Books channel. This is the Malazan book number two, Dead House Gates, and I am reading it on my Kindle. As the time that I'm filming this video, I'm like 50 somewhat percent through this book. I'm really trying to get through the book in time for the discussion. I feel like I can make it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it. It's just long. It's, it's not that I'm having trouble getting through the book. It's not that I'm having trouble uh, being interested in whatever's going on. I'm following along this time a lot better than the first book of this series, Gardens of the Moon, and I'm getting used to the writing style of Steven Erickson, but it's just a long book. Um, so it's taking me, it, it, I'm having to dedicate a lot more time to it than I've anticipated, um, but I'm hoping to get through it this week. That way I can join in on the discussion with everyone. I saw Steve already put out a thumbnail for it. So I'm like, I gotta make it. <laughs> I gotta make it through. So um, being that I have it on my Kindle, this is very easy to transport everywhere. So it's not like um, I'm gonna have that much trouble, you know, carrying it around with me. But I do uh, need to dedicate that time to it. So this is book number two of the Malazan series. We are in a completely different setting, completely different characters from the first book. This setting is more of like a desert setting, very thirsty. <laughs> like I have my bottle of water next to me as I'm reading this because people are dying of thirst and hunger uh, throughout the series. But with this book, I there's it's very heavy on the impact of war on the people and the way that it's affecting society and the trauma that people are experiencing. So it's very dark, but people are still fighting and pushing through for what they believe in. And I feel like in those moments, I'm finding those aspects of humanity that Steven Erickson is trying to convey uh, through these very dark times. Um, obviously is very relatable with a lot of different world events going on so you just see the humanity in here so i'm not going to be very repetitive but the third book of this series is memories of ice and i don't know what it's about because obviously i'm still going through the second book but i will be reading that on my kindle as well yeah i, I just don't know if i'm going to read it with the group i might take a little longer uh we'll see because when the weather starts warming up, we're outside a lot more. So I don't know if I'm going to have that much more time to dedicate towards reading just because of that. And these are very long books. 
so I hope I can if I can make like a, a, a reading schedule um, to get through uh, the book so that way I can talk about it with everyone because I, I feel like these books do warrant discussion like I'm highlighting a lot of stuff in Dead House Gates that I'm like wow that's a beautiful quote that's a great quote oh my god that's this quote is making me think you know what I mean like a lot of stuff like that is appearing throughout the book that does warrant discussion and I want to talk about it with everyone um I just don't know if I'm gonna be capable <laughs> of following the timeline especially considering that there's a lot of other books that I want to be reading right now too it's like my TBR is out of control and I want to read all the books and I want to do all the things and I don't want to say no to anything but it's unrealistic for me to handle everything so I'm trying my best but definitely um, I am reading Dead House Gates it's it is a question of whether or not I will move on immediately to Memories of Ice or if I'm gonna take a little longer but I'm definitely gonna continue on with the series because I I am very interested in it and it is a very epic <laughs> fantasy series so yeah it's very complex all right let's move on one of the reasons why i might take a little longer in getting to memories of ice is because we are still in the middle of the dark tower read-along so we are up to book number seven and it is a thick one um this is the dark tower book number seven um after we finish this one we're going to move on to book 4.5 which was published after this book was published so even though it's not on the same timeline we're, we're going by publication date so yeah we're we're gonna have the discussion for this one in may on stacy's old books channel and so yeah i gotta get through this one too uh so this is a very mixed genre fantasy book definitely dark fantasy but we have some sci-fi in here we have we have we've had romance in here it's a western urban fantasy it's it's kind of all over the place but i'm really loving the in-depth character work that Stephen King is doing with this series and I'm all about it. Um, as a character driven reader, I want to sit with my characters for a long time and just be all up in their heads, psychoanalyzing everything. So book number seven, it's almost over and it kind of makes me sad, but I own, I own the books so I can read them whenever I want, right? <laughs> So uh, yeah, we are going to be continuing on with book number seven with the discussion happening in May. After reading uh, The Dark Tower, we're, like I said, we're going to move on to book 4.5, which is Wind Through the Keyhole. I don't have this book yet. I'm going back and forth on whether I want to get it for my Kindle or buy a physical copy of it because um, I do have all of the books, physical books for books one through seven so it's like might as well get went through the keyhole I'm, I'm going back and forth but book went through the keyhole is supposed to be between um wizard and glass and wolves of the color and i haven't read that yet but um philip chase left a really great review on the wind through the keyhole i will leave a link to that review for you guys to go check out in case you're interested but uh i will be picking that up after reading uh the dark tower speaking of continuing on with series and finishing up series I still haven't read this yet. This is The Fall of Babel, book number four by Josiah Bancroft. Um, book number four of the Books of Babel series, which I am loving. I, I love books one, two, and three of the series. They are so good. Five star reads for sure. And I feel like a four book fantasy series is really nice. A three book fantasy series is great. Four books, great. Yo, 10 books for Mala's on. Like, come on. A lot of books. Even The Dark Tower, it's like seven slash eight books slash 20 books if you're counting all of the, you know, the connections between his other books and stuff. But, you know, a four book series is pretty good in terms of fantasy. So I'm really itching to get to this book and finish out this series. Um, I'm just, you know, booking too much time <laughs> with uh, The Dark Tower and um, the Malazan books. So I really want to finish out this series. 
but again it's another it's another thick book so it's it's pretty big so this one is over 600 pages so it's not as long as some of these other books like the Malazan books which is over 800 pages and the Dark Tower book is another one that's over 800 pages um, but it's still pretty big so I really want to get to this one and finish out the series and give like an in-depth thoughts on the whole the series as a whole um but i need to finish out the series so um this act this copy actually was a gift from steve so thank you so much we did sort of like a book exchange uh during the holidays so he sent me this one along with gardens of the moon so thank you again steve i really appreciate it and i want to read it i want to read it so bad um I just have to make time to read it so so yeah this is another fantasy series if I haven't mentioned it but it's more like steampunk ish um, a lot more science based inventions we still have like weird creatures you still have to suspend your disbelief and all that kind of stuff but um, this is a really great series and I'm very excited to finish it out so the next two books are both by Stephen Graham Jones and this is a planned group collab on YouTube that is being organized by Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life. Um, she wants to do sort of like a month of Stephen Graham Jones in June being that Stephen Graham Jones has written so many books. So I signed up to read two books but they're not long at all. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones writes pretty short books. Um, the first one that I'm about to talk about is a 40 page Kindle book, so I can knock that out. So essentially the idea is to, each person is going to choose one or two or three works by Stephen Graham Jones and put out a review. So that way each day in June, it's sort of like the month of Stephen Graham Jones, right? And we're all kind of putting out a review video for the books that we read. So the two that I wound up choosing was, uh, or the first of the two that I wound up picking up, uh, to read for this is uh, Attack of the 50 Foot Indian. <laughs> so this is sort of a, I was, I was looking up what it falls under in terms of genre and obviously it's a short story, novella, but it's like science fiction, maybe sci-fi, fantasy, humor, maybe magic realism, uh, absurdist fiction. So it's I think it just seems like a really funny short story with a lot of deep, like with a lot of room for discussion. You know, a lot of the times whenever you see something that's supposed to be absurdist or like humorous, you know, there's a lot of undertones under the humor that is worthy of discussion. And I feel like that's what's going to happen with this book. So essentially the idea behind Attack of the 50 Foot Indian is that there's this 50 foot Native American coming out of the water walking around the town right and i guess the implications of that so it's it's very short so i didn't look too much into it but um i'm excited to get to it and work on this collab with amanda if you are interested in doing that collab too uh i'll leave a link to amanda's youtube and you can connect with her so that way she can send you the information to sign up for it i already have a few other buddies signed up for it as well um but uh you can definitely join along if you have a channel Instagram, whatever. Yeah, just connect with Amanda and she'll let you guys know all about it. So like I said, I picked two books to do for that month. So the first one was Attack of the 50 Foot Indian. And the next one is called Mapping the Interior. And this one's more sci-fi. No, this one is, is classified more as horror, fiction, and fantasy, according to Goodreads. Like, you know, people can I guess contribute to what it is I don't know but those were sort of the tags that it fell under I don't know much about this one either the cover looks really cool but according to Goodreads it says walking through his own house at night a 12 year old thinks he sees another person stepping through a doorway instead of the people who could be there his mother or his brother the figure reminds him of his long gone father who died mysteriously before his family left the reservation when he follows it he discovers his house is bigger and deeper than he knew so maybe like a tardis situation you know like doctor who maybe like some horror what was that movie a long time ago with the house and the house was like caving in on itself and monsters are coming i don't know it's probably going to be something like that i don't know um but it sounds really great i've seen a lot of really great reviews on this one um so i'll be reading that one like in may that way i can have the review out for you guys in june 
the next four books I'm gonna talk about, they're all physical books that I own. I've just been itching to get to them. So the first one, <laughs> probably needs no introduction is the song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and this is I think this was this one came out before Circe um, which is one of my favorite books and this one is supposed to be it's sort of like a, a retelling of the Iliad which highlights various characters throughout the um, the Battle of Troy right and so I think this one is supposed to be between like the main characters is Patroclus and Achilles and so I'm really interested to see where this goes this book is highly rated all over book talk all over YouTube book this book is everywhere and I still have not read it I still have not read it so I really really want to get to this book it's been staring at me on the bookshelves highly rated I hope it's amazing, especially especially given that I've read the Iliad for like school a number of times, <laughs> um, being that I was a humanities major slash agriculture major in high school. Um, I read it for my English courses and I was a humanities major for my master's. So um, I've read this a couple, I've read the Iliad a couple times. So I, I want to read this retelling based off the Iliad so we'll see another one I've been itching to get to is Memorial by Brian Washington this is a contemporary fiction um, about these two men who are in I, I believe they're married and um, but one of them is one of them is black and one of them is Asian and the Asian one I, I don't know if he's Japanese or Chinese he's a Japanese American the one that is Japanese, he has to go back to Japan because I believe his father is uh, dying. But then at the same time, his mother is coming to visit. And so she stays with uh, the husband. And I think it's like highlighting marital issues, maybe cultural things. Um, another book that comes highly rated. And I am excited to get to this one very soon. I've been wanting to read it probably for June. I'll probably read it for Pride Month, you know? So yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested in reading this one. Another one that might, that may or may not get read is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is a sci-fi book uh, that has to deal with multi-dimensional travel. <laughs> so there's like multiple dimensions, but I think there's a lot of, but I think it's like an, uh, a mystery, thriller, sci-fi kind of book. Um, another book that comes highly recommended all over the place um, because of the issues that it highlights, I believe. I think there's an LGBTQ plus angle through this book as well. I'm not sure. Um, I've been trying to gloss over reviews of this so as not to get too many clues because I have it. I want to read it. And yeah, it's another one that I keep looking at on my shelf and I'm like, why haven't I read you yet? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in reading this one. I believe um, Lana from Lauren Lullabies really loved this book as well. So yeah, I really want to read this one. So this last one in terms of physical books, I have been mentally preparing myself to read along with The Song of Achilles, right? And that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a World War II book about two sisters. Um, one is a mom, one's sort of like a revolutionary, I think. I, I don't know. But I've heard this book will pull on your heartstrings. It will pull your heart out of your chest, stomp on it, and is supposed to be a really beautifully written book. Um, I have yet to read anything by Kristen Hanna. And I really want to, because I, I feel like all of her books are always very highly praised, and I've yet to read them. I own The Nightingale and The Four Winds, and I haven't read them yet. <laughs> this is my problem. I keep signing up for books to read that I don't own, and then I buy them, and then I buy other books to get to because they sound really interesting to me and then I don't read them because I keep getting consumed by all these other books and I really really want to read this one um it's historical fiction world war ii drama I think there's a series for it or a movie coming out I don't know but I really 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 want to read this one and get into Chris and Hannah's work because I've heard nothing but good things about her writing style um 
and I want to try it out. The books sound really interesting to me. So, um, yeah, The Nightingale by Chris and Hannah. Let's move on to audiobooks. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is one I already have downloaded on my phone. I haven't started it yet, but that is Goliath by Tochi Onyabuchi. Um, I hope I said the name right, but this is a sci-fi dystopian book. It was recently released not too long ago, but I wound up getting a copy of the audiobook from my library. So it's downloaded, ready to go. I'm excited to read it. And it's supposed to be like a dystopian uh, world where I believe like the rich people wound up going to like a space station or a space colony or something. And people left behind have their own societal issues, I guess. Um, I don't know too much about it because I think there's sort of like a thriller angle to it. I don't know, but it sounded really interesting. So I really, really want to get to it. So and it's already on my phone. I just need to start it very soon. The next one I want to definitely read very soon is Full Moon by Jim Butcher. And what's funny is that I already have a physical copy of the book, but here's, here's what's happening here. So my father-in-law, he uh, he loves to draw. And so I already listened to Stormfront by Jim Butcher. And that is the first book of the series of the Justin Files. And we wound up buying a copy of it for my father-in-law. And he lives in New York. And what he does, you know how people like annotate books and they write notes. I know I definitely do. Um, what he does instead is he'll draw within the margins and he'll draw some of the things on the pages so we bought him the first book stormfront and he already read it drew all over it and so my husband is going to go visit him at the end of this month and he's gonna bring him full moon and bring back stormfront so we can kind of go through it and see his drawings and stuff i'm gonna ask him if i can show you guys because i think that'd be really cool maybe i'll put it like on instagram or something um but yeah even though i have the physical copy this is technically for my father-in-law so he can draw all over it and then we'll keep going with the rest of the books in the series um but yeah, I'm going to listen to it because my husband already owns it uh, through Audible. So I'm going to listen to it on my husband's account. <laughs> and and uh, this is going to my father-in-law. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to it and see his drawings. Um, and hopefully he'll give me permission to share it with you guys. This next book is a non-fiction book and it is called The Great Pretender, The Undercover Mission That Changed Our Perception of Madness by Susanna Kahalan, Kahalan, and this is a recommendation from uh, Fine from Fine Reads. I will also link her channel down below. I'll, I'm gonna link everyone that I mentioned in the description box of this video. I hope you guys go check everyone out. Fine is a really great person on the platform as well. Um, I'm going to be on her channel for a discussion on diversity and reading later on this month, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, she wound up reading. Uh, 10 Days in the Madhouse by Nellie Bly based off my recommendation and she had said that it had reminded her of this book, The Great Pretender. And so we're going to try to arrange a buddy read either in June or July for this book. So maybe we'll do a discussion about it too or we'll just buddy read and talk about it in our own videos. I don't know. We haven't really planned anything out. We were just like, we can read it together uh, June or July sometime. So this may be a rollover into my summer TBR if we choose to do it like in July or it'll be towards the end of June or something. I don't know. But um, again, this is a nonfiction book about uh, a psychiatric in institution. <laughs> I'm assuming I haven't read too much about it because I want it to be sort of a surprise. But um, Fine is excited to read it. I'm excited to read it. So um, it's here on my list because of that. So go check out Fine as well. I'm excited to do this buddy read with her. This next one, I have the library physical copy of it. Um, I am making my way through it on audio from my library. I'm about halfway through it. And it is 400, and it is 400 souls edited by Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha and Blaine. Um, and this is a collection of essays and poems um, about African-American history throughout the 
United States, it's a community history of African America uh, from 1619 to 2019. Um, and it's really interesting so far. Like I said, I'm halfway through it. Um, each section is broke up in, is broken up into five years. And so the authors take on this five year time span and they'll discuss a certain issue that comes up and its impact on African American history and American history. Um, and it's just really interesting um, going through each of the essays, um, especially given that each of the essays is written by a different person. So I, I do definitely recommend this if this is a topic that you're interested in. Again, African American history is American history. And I don't think that's something that needs to be said, but apparently it does. I just feel like whenever you see uh, books like this where we're kind of um, having a narrative discussion about um, African history it sort of sorry my phone it sort of gets relabeled as like revisionist history but isn't all history sort of revisionist history like aren't we improving on it over time um, I don't know it's, it's not as if we're taking away history we're just adding more to the narrative so that way we have more of an idea of the story and that is the point of history Sorry, I didn't mean to this for this to get into like a ranty thing, but it's just one of those things that I've been seeing over and over in the news of people being upset, wanting to have these sort of regulations on teachers. And I feel like it's not fair, um, especially given that teachers are doing a really, really, they're, they're doing the hard work of making sure that these students are educated. And then because people's feelings are getting hurt, um, we're having a lot of attacks on curriculum based teaching that would include uh, African American history, Latin American history, um, Asian American history, right? Why should those be supplements or, or things that you have to look for um, in college courses, you know, instead of having it be part of the, the overall narrative that we're trying to teach these students? Um, that's why a lot of the times you see people, grown people, not even knowing geography, not even knowing about different cultures because A, they don't pay attention in class, B, they don't have an interest in learning things that don't include what is absolutely necessary towards their majors, which is understandable. But at the same time, like why, you know, we have a very large units teaching World War II, um, the Civil War, the American Revolution, but then when it comes to uh, history uh, topics about different cultures, um, those are always electives, and I don't think that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I really, really am enjoying this one, and I am planning on finishing this up really soon. Um, like I said, I'm listening to the audio book of this very slowly, and um, I'm enjoying it very much. The next four books are more mood reading if I get to them. I'm already on the holds list for all four of these books through my library and they keep coming up and I keep pushing it back <laughs> because um, I'm reading all these other stuff. But um, they're definitely already on my holds list and they're, they sound very interesting to me and I want to share them with you. So hopefully I can get to all four of these uh, sometime throughout the spring. The first one that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna talk about is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Sturley. This one is contemporary fiction slash magical realism. And this is about a woman who has recently lost her mother, but then she has this vacation planned, I believe with her mother to Italy. And, um, but she wants to taking it by herself. But then when she gets there, she meets this woman who winds up being her mother from the past or something like that. And she winds up having, uh, like learning about her mother through like, I guess the ghost of her mom or whoever this person is or her mom's, I don't know. It sounds interesting. I wasn't trying to get too much information about it. It comes very highly recommended. I've been seeing it a lot on like various famous reading clubs and stuff like that. It's on my holds list and I'm really excited to read it. The same thing goes with The Violent Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. And this is a mystery thriller. Um, and what's interesting about this one is about this violin that gets stolen and I believe the main character is just trying to get his violin back um but you know a lot of stuff is going on <laughs> I don't know if it's like a, a rare violin or something again I, I try to go in a little more blind with mystery thrillers but because I'm really interested in this because of the musical angle um I did mention this before but um 
I do have a lot of newer subscribers, but I did used to play violin for like 10 years when I was younger. Um, I still have my violin. I just, you know, I gotta get a new, I gotta get a new bow. <laughs> my bow broke. Um, I wanna update my case. I need to practice. <laughs> I haven't practiced in a while, but I did used to play violin for a very long time. And so anything with a musical angle uh, always does interest me as well. Um, and this book has been has been highly recommend, recommended and I've been seeing it everywhere. I think it was like on the Good Morning America uh, book club, like one of their book club, club picks. I think it was like the February club pick, um, January or February, one of those months. Um, it was pretty recent, um, but it sounded really interesting and I want to read it. Two more. I think this one I saw on Greg's channel from Supposedly Fun, or it might have been Russell. I think it was Greg. Um, but it is called Pure Color by Sheila Hurdy. And this is a very short book, uh, fiction, contemporary slash magical realism uh, about a girl turning into a leaf or reincarnated into a leaf i don't know it even the description of it sounds weird um i'm just gonna read it because i don't even know how to describe this book and it says uh, in the goodreads here we are just living in the first draft of creation which was made by some great artist which is now getting ready to tear it apart in this first draft of the world a woman named mira li leaves home to study there she meets Annie, who ch whose tremendous power opens Mia ch Mia's chest like a portal to what she doesn't know. When Mia is older, her beloved father dies and his spirit passes into her. Together they become a leaf on a tree. But photosynthesis gets boring and being alive is a problem that cannot be solved even by a leaf. Eventually, Mira must remember the human world she's left behind, including Annie, and choose whether or not to return. So it sounds a little weird. Uh, it's a very short audiobook. I think according to dis the description from my library, it's like a three or four hour audiobook. I don't know. Um, but it sounds weird. I like weird books. Um, we'll see if I get to it. I hope so. Last book I'm going to talk about is Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Lucchetti or Luchette. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's either Luchette or Luchetti. Um, and this is a contemporary fiction about these nuns. I, I think they're getting kicked out of their house um, and then they have to kind of make do in society or something. I don't know. But it sounds pretty, it sounded pretty interesting um, when I read the description of it. And it sounds pretty uh like right up my alley with being like a weird book talking about issues and, and stuff. And I think it has an LGBTQ plus angle to it as well. Um, I don't know. Again, all these books always interest me. I, I love reading across various uh, disciplines, genres, topics, cultures. I'm all over the place. <laughs> That's why I'm always behind in my reading um, that I assign to myself because who's giving me homework anymore? Uh, pretty soon because I'm gonna start school again for a different major uh, so we'll see <laughs> how things go <laughs> so yeah I know that was a lot of books that I'm talking about today I'm really excited to get to all of them I really uh, I, I spread myself a little too much in terms of my reading and I really hope I can get through everything because uh, this is what I love to do. I love to read, um, but I also love to do other things too. So there's that. Um, but let me know in the comments if you plan on reading any of these books. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you plan on reading throughout this season um, because I love talking about books and um, I love adding more books to my TBR because I want to read everything. <laughs> so let me know what you're reading. Um, and with that, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope you all have an amazing day. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.